From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Evening Edition. Now at 6, an armed guard swarmed and subdued in a bold and coordinated attack outside an East Bay convenience store. What the armed robbers were after and why they left the store alone. I'm from the CBS studios in San Francisco. I'm Brian Hackney. And I'm Andrea Nakano. We start in San Mateo County tonight. A five-year-old girl who was rescued from the ocean has died. We're also learning first responders have called off the search for the man who was swept away with the child. This happened at Martins Beach, just south of Half Moon Bay yesterday. Crews say a 54-year-old man and the girl were swept into the ocean. San Mateo County Fire managed to rescue the little girl. She was taken to the hospital but did not survive. Today, the Coast Guard had air and boat crews searching for the missing man before calling off the search. The National Weather Service did issue a warning of an increased risk of dangerous sneaker waves this weekend. Other news we're following today, a brazen robbery in broad daylight in Oakland's Grand Lake neighborhood caught on video. Witnesses tell us eight gunmen robbed a cigarette delivery truck near a busy intersection. Happened in a 7-Eleven parking lot at the corner of Grand Avenue and Mandana Boulevard. An eyewitness there tells reporter Don Lynn exactly what happened. The robbery happened right here. Witnesses believe it was an ambush since the robbers knew what to go after and who to go after. Multiple masked men pointed guns at the security guard. The armed guard was their first target. The robbers took his gun and later tossed away his taser. Once they had the guard on the ground, the robbers went into the delivery truck to take large containers of cigarettes. It was scary. It's scary and it's scary for the Customers. Store owner Rajan Gary witnessed the robbery from inside his 7-Eleven store. He had about five customers. You can see in the surveillance video, he closed the front door to protect themselves. Everybody saw it. It's on a broad daylight, so yeah. everybody was taking pictures from the neighborhood. Uh, Rajan says there was nothing anyone could do. There were eight men with guns, some with extended magazines. Witnesses at a gas station and inside restaurants across from Grand Avenue tell me they were in shock. Some of them called 911. Could it be an inside job? I have no idea how do they track it, but uh, I think they have a people going around. They recognize the truck. It happened Saturday at around 5 p.m. Since it's not their first robbery, a security guard accompanied a delivery driver to drop off cigarettes to the 7-Eleven store. Cigarettes is high value and they can easily, you know, I think, um, sell on the streets. Rajan says their most expensive merchandise is cigarette. Each carton sells for over $100. In fact, robbers have repeatedly robbed convenience stores in Oakland specifically for cigarettes. This is surveillance footage taken from a different 7-Eleven back in September where gunmen took money and cigarettes. In August, thieves use a stolen Jeep to rip out the storefront of a cigarette store in Oakland's Little Saigon. Oakland police have so far responded to close to 3,300 robberies. They say that's a 35% increase compared to last year. We have not seen any significant steps taken by the uh, city to prevent these things. The robbery took about 90 seconds. Rajan believed the delivery driver lost tens of thousands of dollars worth of cigarettes. The security guard's handgun is still missing. The assumption is the robber still have it. So far, no arrests in this robbery. The 7-Eleven store owner says the delivery driver works for Cormark, the supplier for many convenience stores in the Bay Area. We tried to contact them, but have not heard back. Well, here's a look at your Bay Area airports tonight as Thanksgiving week comes to a close. These airports are filling up tonight and through tomorrow as travelers make their way home. TSA expects to screen nearly 3 million people today. That's the most in the agency's 20-plus year history, surpassing the previous record set in June earlier this year. We talked with travelers at San Jose Moneta Airport, and most tell us there were no major issues so far tonight. I think the, uh, the airport itself ha handled it pretty well. I mean, they were probably expecting a large uh, influx of people coming, going in and out from the holidays, so um, I think they handled it pretty well. According to the FAA, nearly 45,000 flights nationwide are scheduled today, and the rush will carry into Monday. 
And if you're just getting back into town, it was a beautiful weekend in the Bay Area. And that could change later this week, a bit anyway. Darren's got the latest. Got another chance for rain coming. So with clear skies out there now, looking west, we got to go farther out into the Pacific, but we don't have to go that far to see the next storm. And when we put this into the future cast, this is going to look familiar for anybody who was playing along with that last storm, the one that was a cutoff low, the one that was so difficult to track because it totally detached itself from the storm track. This one's doing the same thing. But it'll be different with this one because it's not going to sit there. This one will have some motivation to push it on shore, so it's going to be faster, which means it's easier to start forecasting this one. We can already see the leading edge of rain coming on shore late Tuesday night into Wednesday. It's not going to be a major soaker, but we've got to talk more about that rain, and we'll do that coming up in much more detail in the complete forecast. In addition to that, it's cold this morning. Got down to the upper 20s in the North Bay Valleys. And we've got a frost advisory tomorrow morning. I'll show you who has that and how much longer we're going to be doing numbers like that in the morning. For now, guys, back to you. Okay, thanks, Darren. To the South Bay now, a pedestrian is dead after an early morning car crash in San Jose. It happened at the intersection of Capitol Expressway and Copperfield Drive. Police say the victim died at the hospital. Dozens of street vendors in San Francisco's Mission District are worried that new city rules will turn what would usually be their busiest time of year into a bust. Starting tomorrow, the city is temporarily banning street vending on Mission Street between 14th and Cesar Chavez Streets. It's supposed to crack down on crime, but vendors say it's only going to hurt the people who are already following the rules. The city has offered temporary spaces where vendors will be allowed to sell legally, but many say it just isn't enough, especially during a very busy holiday season. There's one on 18th uh, and Mission. It only fits 30 people. And there's one here on 24th and Cap that only fits eight people. That's 38 people and there's 116 vendors. You can say that you have locations for them, but you don't have for all of them. The ban is supposed to last 90 days. Mayor London Breed's office said, quote, the 90-day moratorium on Mission Street is a result of unprecedented safety concerns due to unauthorized vending and illegal activities that may have negatively, have been negatively impacting small business owners, permitted vendors, Mission residents, and visitors along one of the city's busiest transit corridors. Firefighters in Napa County spent the night battling the flames of a house fire in the tiny community of Rutherford. That's just off Highway 29 between Yauntville and St. Helena. Firefighters responded just before 2 a.m. where a two-story home was up in flames. Nobody was inside. Crews were able to keep the fire from spreading to nearby structures, one of which is a historic tank house. No injuries reported in this fire and authorities are still looking at the cause. It is now early Monday morning in the Middle East and what's scheduled for now to be the final day of a fragile four-day pause in the fighting. Natalie Brand has more on the four-year-old American girl who was among the 17 Hamas hostages released today. Four-year-old Abigail Moore Adan, the youngest American hostage in the grips of Hamas, was freed Sunday in the latest handover from the terror organization. <laughs> Displaced residents from the kibbutz where Abigail and her family lived erupted in cheers when the hostages were released. I saw Abigail. She is the best friend of my uh, grand, granddaughter. They also express concern for those who remain hostage. We're praying that they will come back too. She's free and she's in Israel now. Speaking from his holiday weekend in Nantucket, President Biden confirmed Abigail's release. He also emphasized the trauma the girl suffered witnessing her parents' murders on October 7th and her captivity ever since. In hell for 50 days. What she endured is unthinkable. For its part, Israel freed 39 Palestinians from prison. A fourth exchange is expected Monday, the last day of the current four-day truce deal. Hamas said late Sunday it will seek to extend the agreement. That's really up to Hamas because Israel has been very clear as part of the deal. It is prepared to continue the pause in fighting for every day that Hamas produces an additional 10 hostages. President Biden said he'd like to see the momentum continue. That's our goal, to keep this pause going beyond tomorrow so that we can continue to see more hostages come out. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he told President Biden in a phone call Sunday that while he welcomes an extension, Israel will resume full force against Hamas once this temporary truce is over. 
President Biden says that he is hopeful that Monday's exchange will include two American women. By Monday's end, the U.S. says it expects to have a full picture from the Red Cross about the conditions of the remaining hostages. Another major question in the conflict is when and how will Israel move its forces into southern Gaza? The White House says Israel believes Hamas leaders are hiding in southern Gaza, and Israel says combat operations are planned in that area. Today, a rare scene since October 7th. Crowds in southern Gaza flocking to open markets to buy food, clothes, and other essentials. They made sure to stock up on what they need as the ceasefire deal is almost ending. Hundreds of thousands of Gaza residents have fled from the north to the south since the start of the war. The U.S. National Security Advisor had this to say on Face the Nation when asked about Israel's possible operation. Well, what the United States is hoping to see, and frankly, what I believe Israel is hoping to see, is the conditions being set whereby any military action only takes place after civilians uh, have been accounted for and have the opportunity to be in safety, to have access to humanitarian assistance, and to be out of the way of any military operation that is conducted. That's the conversation we're having with the Israelis right now. The Commissioner General of the UN Relief and Works Agency says if combat operations happen in southern Gaza, they are not confident civilians will be safe there. We will continue to follow the latest developments on the pause in fighting in th and the release of hostages. You can find updates anytime on our website, kpix.com, and streaming on the free CBS News app. While all of this is happening, police in Vermont are investigating a shooting that wounded three Palestinian college students. That shooting is prompting calls for authorities to look into whether or not it was a hate crime. This happened last night in Burlington, Vermont. The students were in town visiting relatives. They went for a walk before dinner, and shortly afterwards, somebody opened fire on them. Two of the victims were wearing traditional Palestinian scarves at the time of the shooting. As of tonight, police say there is nothing to indicate any kind of a motive. They were approached by this individual who... Um, pulled a handgun on them and shot all three of them and then left. And again, he didn't rob them. There, there doesn't seem to be any justification. Authorities have collected evidence at the scene, but they have no one in custody. Efforts to reach 41 construction workers trapped in a collapsed tunnel in India have ground to a halt because the latest drilling machine they were using to get to those workers broke down on Friday. Crews worked by hand to remove debris. Now they need to pull out the damaged drilling machine and replace it with new equipment. The workers have been trapped for two weeks after a landslide caused a portion of the tunnel to collapse about 650 feet from the entrance. Well, here's a unique way that Thailand is trying to boost tourism, a banquet festival for monkeys. <laughs> A small town in central Thailand hosts an annual feast for thousands of macaques as a way of saying thank you and eat your greens. Oh, and tourists can get up close to the animals as they feast on fruits, vegetables and desserts. The event started 35 years ago as a way to help attract more tourists to the province, which is home to a 10th century temple. Thanks for watching. 60 Minutes is next, and we'll see you back here at 11. Yeah, and we just wanted to wish our producer, Jacob, a happy birthday. Bye-bye.